What's your favorite dressing? It's, like it's giving very much fruity. The flavor. Let's get this roast to cook it. The dancing queen is here. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. I wanted to win. That's the biggest success. Like you, if you ever want to do something in life, just not wish for it, just work hard for it. So did you not want to win Drag Race? <laughs> I didn't need to. Oh, I'm a fucking legend, bitch. You didn't need to. <laughs> anyway, you're here in Vegas right now. You're doing a lot of amazing stuff and you are a long way from Tigger. So a lot of people don't know this. Before, <laughs> before Drag Race, I hate to. <laughs> whenever you got the call for Drag Race, you were working at Disney as like the character. And I think you said you were working like Tigger was like your main one you were doing. Uh -huh. Can you give us a little uh -huh. Tigger right now next time when we have somebody else? And yeah. Hopefully somebody better. The bar is low. Thank you all so much. <laughs> Even like a silly little comment where like somebody's like, he looks um, X, Y, and Z, and then there'll be like a comment underneath, she. And they say like, no, she bomb snatch game. <laughs> she. With the Billie Eilish look that you did though, uh, like who told you about Billie Eilish? Was it like a niece or a nephew or something? <laughs> like, how did you find out about her? Yeah, some guy, he was riding the ride and they couldn't get the bar down. So they just let the ride go and he got flung off from it. And he like sued them, had to go to the hospital. But oh, you were looking no, that was okay. So, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. That's where you got your fear of fights, right? You know, I do. But even like outside of high school, like whenever you yeah. like, did experience dating and yeah. meeting people, what do you think had more of a negative effect on your relationships or finding partners we think is more due to your weight or the fact that you look like a butch lesbian <laughs> <laughs> oh my god rosie o'donnell That's what is she doing here I, I i'd wear it but i mean i'm just you know don't have the same ailments what do you mean i mean i i can eat sugar and not have to go to the hospital it's not a fucking baby yeah but also like why not <laughs> pretend you have diabetes it's yeah. fine there Okay, wait, can I guess why you gave this to me? Yeah. Big head. Well, it's also bald. But, okay. okay. <laughs> Swerk you. Someone has to. Someone has to, you know. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, because, like, how successful... You did have a relatively successful career for someone, especially starting as late as you did. Yeah. But at what point did you decide, I'm going to be the first, like, one of the first, like, drag queens on the yeah. face? Like, when did you make the decision where, like, I'm going to do this with unblended eyeshadow? Like, this is where... <laughs> Oh, that's the one. There it is. That's the, the one. I'm really grateful that I did cocaine that one day in San Antonio. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to San Antonio. <laughs> I'll see you in a few weeks. They're still booking me. Yeah. <laughs> but even despite being a crack core, you've also <laughs> developed. Do you feel like your charisma in drag is what really elevated you despite how dry your wigs were? This is what you brought me here for. You brought me here to drag me? Well, what was it specifically that made you feel like like an alien of sorts in your scene because looking back like you seem like a pretty standard issue like two like teen from like the holy shit you seem like a pretty standard issue chemically balanced teen of the time look at that coconut head yeah so the audience can empathize and understand that you are just that pretentious <laughs> so thank you for that <laughs> But with that, that is the last bit of time we have. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Fuck this show. I'm not doing this shit anymore. <laughs> cool to jump in and jump out. Like, why not? Yeah, you know, a lot of queens, you know, they pick one awful gig and do it the whole rest of their life. <laughs> so the fact that you have more than one Thank you know, you. decent gig, you know. And now we can fail at three. So. <laughs> yeah, why stop there? And like, obviously what you're most known for now is your Taylor Swift delusion. And I would argue that you are probably the world's most famous Taylor Swift impersonator. Thank you. The best. Really questionable but definitely the most prolific right or give people that feeling of that artist if that makes sense yeah because it's like you it's like even by the fact that you don't really look like taylor and you mm -hmm. sound like lindsay lohan but from a distance <laughs> taylor Swift have not become like the mega star she is today whose coattails would you be riding instead do you think <laughs> your tiktoks have been popping off a little bit like some like your little dances yeah stuff. i'm like yeah, yeah. You're like an inspiration. I'm like, wow, you really can't dance and you're getting so many views. I'm a real recognized real. So she wanted you to do something to be very like age appropriate, but yeah. she let you paint like a 40 year old pageant queen. <laughs> you on the show identified as a pageant girl. You know so much about pageantry. Uh, how many titles have you won? What, what pageants have you competed for? I'm just out of curious. I, I haven't looked it up. You looked it up. I know you looked it up. I, didn't have to. I know you. <laughs> okay, let me give let me give this. 
my entire drag career before Drag Race was under the age of 21. Mm -hmm. So I technically was not legally eligible to compete for any pageant. Glad we get to experience this together. And like, no matter what happens like online or like what you experience on your journey or my journey, where everything takes us, to me, like you will always be a dumb bitch. So. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> You had Sarah McLaughlin and everything. Oh, that's right. You played a part in that. I did. A very small part, but you know what? I love a supporting <laughs> cast. Well, I mean, my, my part was on the screen longer than you are, but that's beside the point. <laughs> like, we're splitting hairs here. So aside from like the skit show and stuff like that, did you have like other ideas that you wanted to do, but just kind of floundered, stuff that didn't go as well as you thought it would? Other than Drag Race, of course. <laughs> Finally, June Jambalaya's animal print Ooh. bridal couture. That's the ultimate boot. Not only did it take her out, it almost took me out during the lip sync. <laughs> that is not just a garment, that's an OSHA violation. But I think the only thing difference between you and me is that in the first year I was doing drag, I actually wore cosmetics. June, are you wearing any cosmetics in this picture? I just thought you were going to say in the first, you know, the difference between you and me, I think it's... Well, it didn't help you none. But like... <laughs> Miss June Jambalaya. You know, as short as your time was, maybe you should change your name to February. Oh. Me in the long run, but you know, I don't have a degree in design. So you're saying that your degree would have helped you in the competition if your headband was glued down. Yeah. <laughs> you probably don't view things that happen in your life as a mistake because all these things led you to where you are today. Yeah. But what do you think? was a bigger mistake in your life? Like your descent into drug addiction or this hair? Ah! Fuck <laughs> Baby, that was Ian back in the day! The little blonde hair? Yes! You look like, back, you yeah. look like my niece. Yeah, I, I, again, like as she said, like I got full clearance, so I made sure this was okay before I dressed up as her religious trauma. I just, so we're clear. <laughs> I was like, this would be a really funny bit, but let me make sure. But with you becoming a model and like all the accomplishments that you've had, how thankful are you that you fixed your teeth when you did? <laughs> Very. Uh -huh. What would you say has been more detrimental to your love life? Do you think it's the fact that you hate bottoming and the fact that you're only attracted to gay men? <laughs> Camden. Oh. Oh, I'm God. really happy for you. I'm glad you made the top. And I am so impressed that you managed to do it without wearing a lip for half the season. Oh! <laughs> Maddie more business when I look at you. I just think, oh man. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, you are, like, super busy because uh, anytime I try to reach out, you always seem to be busy. There was even, like, a show I did in San Francisco, and oh, you happened to be in town. And I remember we were going to get uh, dinner or brunch or something like that, but you were busy. What was going on? What was happening? I mean, a lot of, like, hard work. So if, some people may not know, like, who you are. Some people might not be up to date on the show. You uh, famously dropped the ball and fumbled the bag at the very end of season 14 of Drag Race, <laughs> yep. losing to Willow Pill. How distraught were you when you only won $50,000? Do you know I was in Helen and Gertrude's living room? <laughs> they, they... I, I was wondering where you were because you filmed it. You were like via Skype. Yeah, and it was I, a I, nice kitchen. I know that's my I, kitchen. That was your kitchen? That's my kitchen, bitch. Don't try it. <laughs> that's a, that was a nice apartment. Where did you get a kitchen like that? I was, I was like, this is a How nice kitchen. How very dare you? <laughs> you said referring to yourself as the queen of a thousand faces. Why did you settle on this one? Well, no, you. this is one of the faces. I've got mm. two faces, actually. Oh, yeah. Kind of adopted it, you know? Stolen. That's what American, Colonized. That's what American yeah, yeah. culture is. Yeah. You can't be from the UK talking about colonization. You know, it's, a lot of it is just kind of the bits and bubbles that we've taken from other cultures. Oh, crrr. Child. <laughs> Call the press. You do, like, look like kind of my drag child here in this purple. I don't think we're talking enough. That about this purple hopefully outfit. i got my my jeans from the other parent but yeah like with the purple like the aesthetic yeah. struggle that you experience in drag do you think that most of the discrimination that you received including like the hate messages and having your instagram close shut down do you think most of that stems because you are a plus size queen or it's because you're a huge fucking cunt i think both yeah, but why would i be a villain because you're nefarious give me three villainous moments of mine quickly quickly three three villainous whenever moments. you came for lucy who is that that's that's the second one right there, and then third, you were plus size, uh, existing as a plus size person. That's an automatic strike. With your catchphrase being that it's always time for a cocktail, and you being a sober person, do you feel like you are 
just an enabler at this point, like just encouraging <laughs> everyone else. Because you're like, I'll be the DD. So yeah, it's always exactly. time for a cocktail to be your drag is that you always have your plus one. Right. Steve of Mr. Kasha Davis. And that's been the way ever since the beginning. <laughs> that's the first the be- night. The first time. That is our... You, you look so ravishing in plastic pearls. <laughs> things that you might have missed out on or how your drag has changed. But also to show that, you know, you're more than you were before. Right. And like the growth. Because you went from 11th place to 10th. And, you know, that's nothing to sneak about. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I am not the best competitor with RuPaul's Drag Race. You're a gentler judge. More soft-handed than RuPaul might be. Absolutely. You know what the toughest eliminations are for me? The early ones. Mm. I cry more for the girls that leave early because I see myself in it. Yeah. And then when it gets to top four, I'm like, bitch, you made it all the way. Ta-ta. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's one girl goes out second, you're like, that girl's going to be on this panel someday. She's going to be somebody. <laughs> so they sit down and just read all the all the collection of it and they go home. Because mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to pay for it. No. <laughs> well, I couldn't pay for it. Yeah. You gave me more like Code Lyoko vibes. I don't know why. It's just what I was getting. Maybe it's because you have a big forehead, but I don't know. It's just, damn. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, how's your last name going to be Story? You can't even read. Oh. Oh. oh my God. One of your earliest performances in drag was as Gaga, yeah. which you won a lookalike contest to mm-hmm. get flown out to New York. Mm-hmm. How bad were the other contestants considering this is what won? Like, how bad? <laughs> of anime who is like one of your favorite artists is it still kamui jack kamui jack mm-hmm. is that still like your top your top artist yeah i'd say so yeah <laughs> yeah i'm really in the veiny anime right now yeah but speaking of like selling your art you actually took your art to uh fanime con a long time ago you didn't sell a lot you made like a profit of like maybe a hundred dollars yeah but did that experience of short lines and not selling merch prepare you for drag con absolutely yeah. <laughs> i guarantee you yeah because yeah. you start when you're 21 not to out you for your age but most of the drag race fans can't do math so you're good mm-hmm. but being like a d-list celebrity you obviously are now especially like in nightlife you're offered Probably a lot of stuff, like more so than ever. That look. No, I have worse looks. What do you think you should have won it for? I could have won it for the palm tree look. The palm tree one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like, it was what it was. The palm tree one, I feel like you said earlier, great idea. It's not the best execution. I fucking love that idea. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're on season 11, All Star 6, and Canada versus the World. What franchise do you want to lose next? Damn both like our own entertainers and we're both individuals and the constant comparing us to each other it's hurtful and i just feel like ribbon bows around my shoulder and i'm only getting older mama don't make me put on the dress again (laughs) what would you say is the worst part about your illness would you say it's the bodily deterioration the side effects and hassle of your medication or people always asking you questions about your illness (laughs) <laughs> He's got some fucking nerves. If you had to rank them. What? I was so terrified of what people were going to think of me on the season. That's why, like, I would never even dare to call you a Make-A-Wish drag queen. Like, I would <laughs> never. That is, is too fucked up. And it's wrong. 